Welcome to MEB. This is episode 5, Process Variables. Back in episode 2, I talked about block flow diagrams as a way to conceptualize processes. But in order for these diagrams to be truly useful for solving problems, we have to include some more information on them. The most important thing that we need to track is the amount of every chemical species in every stream. This will form the cornerstone of the material balances that we'll do soon. Even if we don't know the exact numerical value, we should label the amount with a variable. The notation that I use for variables is m dot, which represents mass flow rate, or n dot, which represents molar flow rate. Possible units for the mass flow rate include kilograms per minute, pounds per hour, grams per second, or really anything with the dimensions of mass per time. Likewise, units of the molar flow rate could be anything with units of moles per time, like moles per second. You'll notice that I'm using either mass or moles to represent amount, and this is generally fine. A quantity that we cannot use to represent amount is volume. This is because volume is fickle. It does not necessarily obey the general balance equation. For example, a gas will occupy less volume if you simply cool it or pressurize it, and neither of these are terms that are in the general balance equation. I mention this because of the quantities mass, moles, and volume, Volume is the easiest to practically measure. Think about it. You buy milk, gasoline, and soda by the volume instead of the mass or the mole. Likewise, measurements or specifications in chemical processes might be made on a volume basis. Therefore, we need to know how to convert volume to mass or moles. The property that allows conversion between mass and moles is the density, which is the mass per unit volume and given the symbol of the Greek letter rho. Using the commandments of units that I covered in the last episode, we can multiply the volume and the density to yield mass. You can look up densities of common chemicals, but beware, tabulated densities are valid only for liquids, not gases. Even if the online source has the density of a gas, this is for a specific temperature and pressure. This is unlikely to be the same temperature and pressure that you need. If we want to convert to moles, the property that allows this conversion is the molar mass, or molecular weight, defined as the mass per mole. Again, the calculation comes about by considering the units. If we start with mass and want to get to moles, we must divide by the molecular weight so that the mass unit cancels. Going back to the requirement that we label every stream with the amount of every component in that stream, one option is to take this literally. If there are multiple components in a stream, as is usually the case, we label the flow rates separately. The convention we use in MEB is to assign each stream a number, and the flow rate is given subscripts for the stream number and the species. For example, N3 acetone would mean the molar flow rate of acetone in stream 3. Practically speaking, however, it is difficult, if not impossible, to measure flow rates of individual species in real processes. It's much more practical and common to measure the total flow rate and the composition of a stream. We can define the composition on a mole basis or a mass basis. Another term for the composition is the mole fraction or the mass fraction. In both cases, you can think of the composition as a percentage. The molar fraction is the molar flow rate of a species divided by the total molar flow rate. The same logic applies to the mass fraction. Notation-wise, we'll start by giving the molar composition the letter Y and mass composition the letter X. By rearranging these equations, we come to a very important relationship and realization. If we know the molar composition and total molar flow rate, we can multiply them to obtain the molar flow rate of the individual species. If this math sounds confusing to you, consider a short example. If you had 100 moles of a mixture and the mixture contained 40 mole percent water, we could say that there are 40 moles of water in the mixture. Therefore, this all represents a second valid path towards block flow diagram labeling. We can label both the total amount of the stream and the composition with the understanding that we can convert this to a molar amount at any time. Earlier in this episode, I taught you that density is the link between mass and volume, and molecular weight is the link between mass and moles. This might have seemed straightforward when we had a single component, but what should we do if the stream is a mixture? The strategy here is to use the average density, or average molecular weight. The average molecular weight is somewhat straightforward. The calculation is simply the weighted average of the component molecular weights, using the molar composition as the weighting factors. For example, let's calculate the average molecular weight of air. 
Let's assume, as we always will for this class, that air is 79 mole percent nitrogen and 21 mole percent oxygen. Of course, in real life, there are other trace components, but this will keep the calculation simple. Because the molecular weight for nitrogen is 28 grams per mole and oxygen is 32 grams per mole, this calculation gives an average molecular weight of 28.8 grams per mole, but we can simply round this to 29 grams per mole. The average density is a little trickier. Certainly one option is to simply use the same weighted average calculation for the densities. Another option is to calculate the inverse of the average density. Except note that the weighting function here is the mass composition, not the molar composition. However, both of these methods are only estimates. Here's why. If you were to mix 25 milliliters of water and 25 milliliters of ethanol, you might assume that you'd end up with 50 milliliters of a water ethanol mixture. But surprisingly, this is not the case. In fact, in many mixtures, volume is not additive. And this is yet another reason why we must not ever balance volume. This concept is called delta V mixing, and it will be a subject covered in a later course in thermodynamics or phase equilibria. So the best thing to do when you need to calculate the average density of a mixture is to simply look it up from actual data. In chemical engineering, one of the best data sources is called Perry's Chemical Engineer's Handbook. Now the term handbook is kind of humorous here because Perry's is a mammoth of a tome. I wouldn't recommend carrying it around anywhere unless you want a full workout, but you might be able to find an online version on the library website. If Perry's doesn't have the density of the mixture that you want and you can't find it elsewhere, you may be stuck with assuming volume additivity and using either of the estimate formulas. Although your answer won't necessarily be precise, your estimate would be acceptable, provided that you clearly state your assumptions. For my class, I'd accept either method in the absence of any other information. What happens if we have the mass composition of a stream, but we desire the molar composition, or vice versa? In this case, the procedure is first to assign a basis. A basis is another concept that we'll come back to later, but for now, just understand that it means any arbitrary amount. I love to use 100 kilograms for my basis because it makes the math so much easier. Then we convert the composition to an amount using the formula discussed earlier. Then convert the mass of each species to moles of each species. Finally, we can add all the molar amounts to obtain the total moles, then divide the individual molar amount by the total amount to calculate the composition of each component. The entire process works the same in reverse. Let's walk through a quick example. Let's say we start with a mixture that is 20 mole percent hydrogen, 30 mole percent water, and 50 mole percent nitrogen, and we want to convert this to a mass percent. Step one is to assign a basis. Again, 100 is an easy number to work with, so let's say 100 moles. Now we multiply the molar compositions times the basis to obtain the molar amounts for each component. Next, we convert these molar amounts into mass amounts for each component by noting the molecular weights. Hydrogen is 2 grams per mole, water is 18 grams per mole, and nitrogen is 28 grams per mole. Now we sum those masses. 40 plus 540 plus 1400 equals 1980 grams. Finally, we calculate mass compositions by dividing the mass of each component by the total. For hydrogen, I get 2 weight percent. For water, 27.3 weight percent. And for nitrogen, 70.7 .7 weight percent. Three other pieces of information that you may want to include in your block flow diagrams are the phase of matter, meaning solid, liquid, and gas, temperature, and pressure. This information won't actually become critical for block flow diagrams until later in the course when we get to energy balances, but I've included it here for the sake of completeness. Episode 5's Learning Objectives. Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Describe the two options for tracking the amount of every component in every stream, including the proper notation. 2. Explain why volume is not an acceptable measurement of amount in a chemical process. Three. Be able to convert between mass, moles, and volume for either single components or a mixture, and be able to convert mass fractions to mole fractions, and vice versa. That'll conclude this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.